I'm excited uh, to, to introduce a, a media partner of ours and, and, and now becoming a friend of Resight, um, Beren Chatsi Chusain, uh, the editor in chief of World Ar Architecture Community, um, who has a really wide reach in, in, in the world of architecture around the world. And, and Beren uh, is going to ask Martin some questions, and um, if we have some time, to, to the audience, of course. And so thank you, Beren. It was fascinating and impressive um, presentation. And I should say this before, you know, I've never been in Copenhagen and visit um, Super Killen, but I promise I will visit after uh, this discussion, or I have to. Um, maybe let's start the use of Super Killen. How? Wh what are the real benefits for the um, citizens of, um, you know, Copenhagen? Because I'm an architect, and this talk, which, you know, will be much more architecturally, yeah, since you're a ar um, landscape architect. So, as we are architects, we are always having trouble with, uh, you know, transforming um, into the knowledge, in, uh, transforming knowledge into the reality, right? Because you have a vision, but um, what was your vision uh, behind the project, or what was your design strategy? And you proposed something, and we worked, you designed it, and we see it, and it's working now for all the citizens, because also you know, uh, it was a risk because you brought many, many materials from other countries um, and, you know, created a new design form, a new entity. Also, was also a risk for the design, you know, that you did before, I think, before. Uh, so, let's talk about, first of all, what were the, you know, benefits for the citizens? Mm. Are they using all the time the super kiln. Well, I mean, on a very, let's say, um, banal level, is also the amount of program that is in this park, no? Mm -hmm. The amount of things you can do, you know? So you had a brief, right? Or no. The, we, yeah. in the end, created, for example, that you have a loudspeaker was not a wish of the of the, uh, of the brief. We had uh -huh. a brief, actually. Mm. But the brief said, do a park, whatever, mm -hmm. yeah? So, um, no, but the program of this park, you know, the, the, the mayor, independently from all the, let's say, um, academic or, or, or conceptual issues or identification issues that I actually talked about enough, I think, in my presentation. Another thing that I didn't mention is just the renewal of program. You know, when you go to a park now, you have maybe a swing, maybe you have, I don't know, you have certain things, uh, certain elements that repeat almost in every space. Yes. Okay? And just the differentiation of uses, I think, that you can box there, that you can uh, play your music there, that you can barbecue there, that you can do a lot of things that usually are actually not allowed in public space. And mm -hmm. so this, 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 just the programming of the space, I think, is a big benefit for the, for the inhabitants because they... Um, in the end, they can use this space almost as an extension of their private of their private space. No, I've, I've seen, for example, where the barbecue area is. There was a wending bonds, no, and they occupied all the three barbecues and all the tables all together were covered with with with, ta with uh, cloth and, and 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 and. So in the end, the idea that um, that is good, you know, um, as I said before, there is a crisis of the private space. Let's say. And that that gives a big chance to the public space. No, the, mm -hmm. the private space is not protected anymore. We it's vulnerable because of of communication, of control. We we can't hide our private activities anymore, like we used to. And so that's the reason we don't need the private space as much, maybe anymore. But uh, uh, we can start to to rethink of how to use the public space. No, mm -hmm. and that so this is I think this are this is the let's say the banal benefits is just to have a park full of interesting things that you can do in it and not just some kind of boring thing where, where, which is actually more interesting for your dog than for yourself, no? Mm -hmm. Did you confront with any problems that during the time of using this uh, super kiln, any problems you faced with while design process or in a you know, practical way, I don't know? No, of course, we had hundreds of... The city hated us. So uh, everyone there, likes... No, no, everyone likes it. The, administ the city, actually, our client, mm -hmm. in the end hated us. Only because the project got so incredibly famous and, uh, and, and got so much positive reactions, they start to mm -hmm. like us again. But, uh, but uh, it was quite a difficult, pro a difficult process. No? To, to, but they were actually also bra brave enough to, in the end, let us do it. But there was a lot of fighting with them, and they felt a little bit... Um, Actually, when some of the objects started to break, 
the, obviously we didn't tell the city when we were doing the project, you know, all these objects are not tested, for example, the, the playground objects, you know, usually when you buy a playground object, it's being pre-tested, tested like beforehand for a year or two or whatever, so these objects are actually copy-pasted from some kind of yeah. stuff, no? So that many of them broke in the beginning because there was so much use on them, and the city felt like, you didn't tell us that they will break, of course not, we wouldn't have done, you wouldn't have allowed us to do them if we would tell, told you, so they felt like that we uh, cheated on them, what we actually did, so it's a difficult, difficult issue, but uh, sometimes you have to take certain risks to get good results, and we are happy actually. It also could have gone wrong, obviously, no? But, um, but it was quite a, a difficult process. It was not easy all the time. It was, yeah, um, and yeah. it's, it's working very well, I see it. Maybe we should test it before. <laughs> okay, what are the secrets of um, uh, universal design principles of public spaces? Maybe it depends on, you know, from person to person or context to context, but is there any uh, concrete uh, social and political agenda that all architects or landscape architects or urban designers that need to follow up? Can you propose it? I don't, no, I actually can't. No. no. Um, I mean, one thing, I don't, it really depends on the context, and the context is not only the place, mm -hmm. it's the budget. Is We also had, I must say, we, have a, we had a very generous budget. We had a, 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 not only the city of Copenhagen, but we had also another client being a foundation, a Danish foundation, who paid us to do all this the stupid stuff like the trips and all these things. No, That was not tax money, but money of a foundation. So we had a very good setting. I mean, there is actually, uh, otherwise it wouldn't have worked. So... Um, but I don't think it's good to copy paste. I mean, it's good to uh, think of ideas or of strategies that you can adapt. But in the end, one shouldn't. Um, I don't think that this this is a recipe that can be copied. No. But one thing that I would like is the idea, or maybe two things. One is the idea that not to be too scared of conflicts. You know, because conflicts in the end always bear also force and chances. So not to be not to live out of fear. You know, but to to think of change because cities, good cities, are actually places in constant change. No, and um, if you try to avoid this kind of constant change, then you also fall back in your qualities. You know, mm -hmm. you might maybe, if you are a beautiful city or an old city, you might maybe live for a while from your past, but uh, there is also always a future, and that future doesn't come only from your past. No, I mean, uh, you have to also to create it. You have to think of it. And you have to be also um, a little bit uh, d dialectical, but also positive about what could come, no? And not always, um, because if we live out of fear, then uh, then that always ends up in in repression, and um, and uh, so I don't think that's that's a good that's something that cities shouldn't have. Okay, I'm just um, as we know, you know, maybe this is um, this lead me a second question. The city's streets, publics, or you know, um, public spaces are exposed to many conflicts, violence, and in urban design or urban streets that we live in. And this, um, uh, or all of them, new materialist gazes arise in these fights. You know, as citizens are can be read as a new historians of the citizens because they are, because we are changing the street and you know our environments radically and transforming themselves. So, um, in general, in design process for you or for architects, for urban designers, maybe uh, when we come to the design process, how all of these urban imageries or conflicts, uh, you know, put themselves as a new vision or a concrete framework or, you know, any original idea, right? So, uh, because it's very, very difficult to, um, you know, come to from, transform it from the digital paper to the reality. So, how would you comment on that, you know? How do you transform the knowledge into the reality? Again, I mean, I don't have a recipe for that. That's uh, obviously as experience, and it's what we study as well. No, uh, the, the, maybe the question, if I understood you right. Sorry, conflicts are also superficial and also physical. But okay. uh, when you come to turn into a physical space, how they are formed or they are shaped, you know, through your vision. So with machines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
Okay, I, I don't know, I'm associating because I don't know if I can answer that, but one thing that I always believe is that when you have a good idea, and that happens my, mostly in the very beginning of the process, uh, to stick to it, no? Mm -hmm. And not to get scared on the process because we are also kind of, in German there's a nice term called vorauseilender Gehorsam, and it's not translatable because uh, it, it means that you are actually acting or was already accepting realities uh, in advance, you know, you are self-repressing yourself, no? Mm -hmm. And I think in this process of translation between reality and fiction, or reality and ideas, the lose, the lost, is, or the nature of lost is enormous. But that's the reason it's very important that we are very stubborn and stick to the things that we believe are right uh, in the process. And, um, and also take certain risks into, into calculation, no? I mean, mm. otherwise if we, uh, we can't ask our users or the cities to be courageous, but we say we don't want the risk, we want to be, you know, so safe. So you have, to, okay. you have to also take risks and see, because you also don't know, you, you experiment partly as well, no? you, you try, you try, and when you try you also do errors, especially if you do things that haven't been done the way you're doing them beforehand. So, mm -hmm. But I think every profession needs this kind of risk-taking, um, or every professional uh, needs this kind of responsible risk-taking. It's not killing yourself, obviously, yeah? but, uh, but uh, a responsible risk-taking is, is, is very relevant. And in the end, if I look at our profession, there is no much of that, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking this because you designed and it's working. It's, it's a reality yeah, that you have created now. And all the Copenhagen citizens embraces your work on design and you are, they are using it. So and that's why I asked this question, sorry. Okay, and also you transformed the, your other aspects of migration in a positive way. Everyone, even if everyone talks about the negative aspects of the migration uh, in our you know, previous uh, lectures or designs, but you approach differently and you solve the problem. So, okay, uh, maybe we should take a few questions. We have uh, five minutes, I think. Yes. You can have we mine. have one. <laughs> oh, there is one coming. Can you speak a little bit louder because we cannot hear? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot hear you. Uh, hmm? Yeah, so I was interested in the idea that you used like all these different elements, different objects from so many different places because one thing I don't think has been addressed much in this conference so far is the idea that as migration increases, as we get more and more people who are migrating, and I think that is something we'll see a lot more of in the coming century, um, there's this risk, I think, that cultures will get very diluted. There'll be a lot of different, um, to use the terminology from earlier, if every city is being made of the same mosaic of different cultures, do we risk uh, cities becoming very homogenous and that's something that has been commented a lot in the context of um, kind of commercial entities that are kind of uh, you know McDonald's is homogenizing every city in the world because they have their certain brand I was really interested in that the fact that you used these objects and not just that that you used commercial objects from around the world I was wondering if you could comment on how you see this playing out over the next hundred or more years in terms of the mix of cultures that are going to be uh, put together by migration. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, the problem is that we have maybe too much of a one-dimensional or one-directional idea of how future works, but none of us really knows. But if we look at the past, in the past, we, ha we, ha we have had a certain uh, equalization in the world always, you know, if it was the Roman Empire or the Greeks or so we have all this kind of, we in Europe speak very similar languages now, we have three roots of languages and they are all very similar in the end if, if it comes to it, so we have that kind of situation anyway. And then differences, I think people also, um, uh, 
the, the continuation of a story always creates these hybrids that always bear some of what is in the past. I mean, look in America, for example, you know? I mean, people, you talk to people, they will still tell you where the grand, 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 grandparents maybe were from, you know? And they were German or Irish or whatever, and they still, I don't know, not two German words. That's the last leftover, yeah? Of the, of the, of the special way of, of doing it. But if you look more carefully, you will see how cultures influence each other. You know, even uh, in a not not so visible way. So uh, I think that we will we, there will remain differences. I don't think that we have to be scared of that. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, and also, and also I think there are going there are going things there are things going to happen in the world that we can't predict. You know, I was reading this article about I think in thousand years it was or something. They were saying that there was that Bangladesh was flooded, so all the Bangladeshis had to leave. And they all went to Groenland because Groenland was like uh, uh, empty. And thanks to global change, it was uh, livable. And then, and then it was a new culture created that was Danish, uh, Bangladeshi, and a little bit of Eskimo in it. You know, so you don't know. And that's what we have been experiencing in the world since the world started. Now that we have cultures uh, overcoming or, or conquering other others and and, 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 and and creating merges of different of different things and this is a fascination and i don 't think that that will ever stop probably you know, because uh, nature will always kind of uh, cheat us in in the end no it 's always more forceful than we are and so and, and so in the end we will have to always somehow react to 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 um, to certain situations, so um, I, I don't see that danger. Uh, I was wondering, you were saying that uh, cities like Copenhagen are in need of disorder, and my question would be if Superkillen really is disorder, because it's a little bit like the English Garden, because it's, it is actually designed to be disorder, so is it really, and if you go there, you think like, okay, super clean, that's where disorder is. So that's basically also planned that this is where disorder is. So is it really? No, you're right. You caught me there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Obviously, it's like with a box ring, you know. Obviously, we don't want to, to dissolve Copenhagen and create chaos and turmoil. So, but and, but it, it, let's say it's a disorder in a certain frame. Is aggression in a certain frame? Is violence in a certain frame? So, is instead of just avoiding all these things, it's just giving them, giving these things that in the end also are very human and can be uh, um, helping uh, to develop a, a character or an identity. Giving them a, a space. No, that doesn't mean that. Um, but it, it's still part of the system. It's not out of the system, and it's subversive, but it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not guerrilla war. It's not ISIS. No, so. Okay. Thank you.